On February 23rd, 2020, just a few weeks before the pandemic, 42-year-old George Torres Jr. had climbed inside a suitcase as a joke after a night of puzzles, painting, and Chardonnay and asked his girlfriend to close it up. His girlfriend, Sarah Boone, said she had gone to bed assuming he'd be able to escape. However, Torres was not lying next to her when she awoke the following day. He was still in the suitcase, not breathing. This is a chilling story of unrestrained resentment over a night of drinking that ends in a cold, cruel dawn of death. George was a divorced father of three who was in a relationship with Sarah and was living with her in an apartment on Franz Lane in the city of Winter Park, Florida. George was a native Philadelphian and worked at a local Ace Hardware store. Sarah was also divorced and was sharing custody of her only son, Lucas, with her ex-husband, Brian. George had a troubled past. He was arrested multiple times throughout this four-year relationship with Sarah for violation of no contact orders and for intimate partner violence. In fact, in 2019, he was arrested three times alone. His arrest had led to court-ordered substance abuse classes and batterer intervention program. George attended the classes diligently and things started getting better for the couple. According to Sarah, George learned to control his demons after the classes, most of which were the results of stress and alcohol. And according to Sarah, she sympathized with him and dedicated her life to helping George. That was until February 24th, 2020. The Orange County Sheriff's Department received a frantic 911 call from Sarah Boone, who told the operator her boyfriend was dead. She explained that she and her boyfriend were playing a hide and seek kind of game. She said that she had put him in a suitcase because they both thought it would be funny. But then she went upstairs and fell asleep and only noticed the following day that he was dead in the suitcase. The operator then asked her to perform CPR on George, but she kept repeating the same thing. He is dead. Her irritation increased the more prolonged the dispatcher kept her on the line. And for someone whose significant other just passed away, Sarah was eerily chill on the phone, as if she was calling to report something significantly less tragic. When paramedics arrived, they discovered George lying on his back beside a large Navy suitcase near the apartment's front door. He was blue and stiff, and the paramedics declared him dead. Sarah was captured in the body cam of a patrolling officer soon after the paramedics had announced George's death. She seemed agitated and asked the officer for a cigarette and a Dr. Pepper. After the detectives from the Orange County Sheriff's Department arrived to interview her, Sarah recalled the details of George's death during a game of hide and seek. However, she seemed to have forgotten that helping your opponent hide defeats the game's purpose. Sarah told the detectives that she and George had been drinking wine, putting up a puzzle, and painting before deciding to play hide and seek. She hid in the upstairs shower, but George failed to find her, so she came back downstairs. Then, according to Sarah, George suggested that it would be funny if he got in a suitcase that Sarah had pulled out for charity clothing. She agreed and zipped him in before letting him wriggle for a while. She went upstairs around 12.30 a.m. and accidentally fell asleep forgetting George was still in the suitcase. After waking up from an 11 hour sleep, she noticed George was not next to her, but she figured he was already up and working on his computer. It was not until an hour later that Sarah realized she didn't unzip the suitcase from the night before and that George was still inside. She rushed to the suitcase and found George blue, stiff and bleeding from the mouth. Sarah tried CPR before calling her ex-husband who lived a block away. After arriving at her house, her ex-husband told her she had to call the police. She also wondered whether the cause of George's death was an aneurysm, stroke, or heart attack. The detectives then asked her if they often drank, to which she replied that she only ever had a couple glasses of wine with dinner. She then asked the police where they had informed George's family yet and was curious about what they would say. The police told her that they would tell them what they knew. Sarah replied, they're gonna think I killed him. Before the police left, Sarah gave them both verbal and written permission to go through her phone, unknowingly handing them the evidence that the police would use to charge her with the murder of George Torres. In the mobile phone, police found two videos taken the night of George's death. 
One of them captured George rocking inside the suitcase, begging Sarah to open the case. Sarah laughed and taunted him as he told her he couldn't breathe. She responded with, yeah, that's what you do when you choke me. And when he pleaded again, she said, that's what I feel like when you cheat on me and F you and you should probably shut the F up. In the second video, the suitcase was a few feet from the door and in a different position. George died of asphyxiation, according to the autopsy, and his body was severely damaged. He had a black eye and bruises and wounds on his head. He also had bruises and wounds on his back and hands. It was discovered that he had been trapped inside the luggage for 11 hours. He had alcohol in his bloodstream at the time of his death. One day after George's death, Sarah was taken into custody by detectives. She told the detectives that she had a list of questions she needed to go through with them. She wanted to be in control of the interrogation. She also thought it would be important for the police to know who they were dealing with. She told them that she was a straight A student, an incredible mother to her son, and that she excelled at everything she did. She also told the investigators that no one knew George better than she did and that she knew George better than he knew himself. She was trying to make the conversation about herself. She told detectives she helped him and took care of him. When told about George's injuries, Sarah got defensive and told police that she didn't ever lay a hand on him. But she also told them that he fell off her son's bike a few days ago and that George was notorious for running against the wall when he was angry. She said his injuries were probably a result of that behavior. In case it was not obvious, Sarah was a narcissist who needed to be in control of everything. A neighbor told the police that he had heard a loud banging sound from their apartment as if something fell down the stairs. It is possible that Sarah asked George to get inside the suitcase only to push him off the stairs. The detectives then presented Sarah with the videos found on her phone. She said she didn't want to watch it as it made her sick, but she explained that she didn't think he was actually panicking inside the suitcase. And when asked why she didn't open the suitcase, she told the officers George had done this in the past. She tried everything she could to get out of this situation, but the evidence was enough to arrest her and charge her with the second degree murder of George Torres. Sarah is currently being held without bail and is awaiting trial in the Orange County Jail in Florida. If convicted, she could face life in prison. The murder of George Torres, as tragic and creepy as it is, is also sad. He was trying so hard to get his life back on track, but his life was cut short by a pathetic narcissist. One can only hope justice is served.